artificial intelligence, AI systems, subsumption, non-player characters. In the Star Citizen universe, you as the player will determine the course of your own adventure. But that adventure will probably take you to the space stations, cities, planets, and star systems throughout our galaxy. And populating those locations with NPCs that behave in believable ways is an essential part of achieving the fidelity and immersion that we're striving for. Let's check in now with members of our social, FPS, and ship combat teams for a few updates on their work throughout the quarter. So we've been doing usables and behavior setup, uh, primarily what we're calling the, the vendors. Where we're at with the, the usables is we're currently setting up the templates. So we're going through all the different types. So we're going through seats and beds, we're doing standing consoles, and they're just going to be looking at, basically on priority order, what the next uh, different types of uh, usables are. And on the, the behavior uh, roles, we are setting up the, the vendor. So we're working on the vendor at the moment, and then we should be moving on to uh, some of the civilian AI. So at the moment, in terms of the vendors, we're trying to improve the shopkeeper, trying to make the AI believable in the PU. What can I get you? Bearing P8 AR probably the most requested rifle I have. She's good, but with the right attachments can really shine. Of course, knowing which ones are the right ones is the quickest way to get into an argument with a Marine. One of the things we did was to replace like, some of the prototype behavior we had, in the, which is in the current version, um, which is also currently live, and replace that with a modular approach. So basically every AI that we have, or every AI that will enter combat, will run the same behavior, but will be able to choose different tactics depending on what they're classified as. And also working on behavior side, we also do some fixing on our cover system uh, by selecting and actually uh, answering when a cover gets compromised so that it gets improved. We also work on improving the tactical point system. It's a system that uh, provides, uh, helps NPC for planning uh, by answering to requests like give me the best cover or uh, give me the best position in open space for shooting at, at the target. So right now we have the two base tactics because we still see a lot of issue with, for example, networking and a yes. lot of delays and glitches. So our two main tactics that we have currently is the one that's currently that's implemented, that's fight from cover, but we have like a different, like an improved version of it, and there's also fight from open space. So this would be your basic soldier, what he can do. The next tactics we're probably going to iterate um, further down the line, but we want to polish these first and make sure that they work flawlessly in the network um, and in different environments before we go on and like start polishing all the new tactics. For this quarter, the ship AI team worked on four different topics. The first one is strafing. The enemy AI is now capable of doing orbital strafe maneuvers. They are capable of doing strafing while doing flybys, as well as strafing while doing breakaways. The second topic is target selection. The AI now distribute more sensibly on all the targets that are available based on factors like distance, but also what kind of target it is and how powerful the attacker is um, himself. Then the third topic is self-preservation. We added a new skill which judges for how long, for example, an enemy will break under fire or how likely it is that he breaks under fire when taking damage or when losing a shield face. And the fourth topic is 3D pathfinding. You can mostly look forward to the enemy AI distributing more sensibly and more fairly on all the available targets and the enemy AI will also do orbital strafe maneuvers on the player, meaning they will try to strafe around him while facing him and getting some shots in. The better the AI player, the more often they will do it and the longer they will do it at a time. Each quarter inside Star Citizen focuses on the development of the patch at hand. In this case, the upcoming Alpha 3.6, currently in testing. Now to wrap things up for this week, we thought it'd be fun to go and check in with some of the developers you saw throughout this season and a couple we'd never managed to pin down and find out what about Alpha 3.6 excites them. Check it out. 
What am I most excited about 3.6? Freaking Lost Systems, bro. It's just gonna make the game, I think, feel a lot more like it's tying all the pieces together. It, we now have jurisdictions. Faction agents, we can think about bounty hunting, we can think about uh, police, UE advocacy, so many things. This is the glue that we need in order to make all the disparate gameplay features make sense. We've got new locations in there, like a junk site. It's kind of a salvage yard where you take a stolen ship to be chopped up. It's not the Wild West anymore and you're able to have repercussions for your consequences, for your consequences for your actions, whatever that was. How about Law and Order? Is that a ship? Law, law <laughs> uh, I love Law and Order, it's a really good show. <laughs> it's your choice of what you can do. If you want to shoot someone in the head, shoot someone in the head, but the consequences are going to be pretty dire. <laughs> Chased by the cops, uh, stuff like that, I mean, come on, that, that's just... That's awesome. The kind of idea that not only do we have the UE governing everything, but the individual planets get a say in their law, and you're seeing that as you fly around. Every single action that you make in the game matter. Most actions. Maybe not every action. But a lot. But a lot of them. It's a work in progress. <laughs> like, look at it. Look at it, though. I want to tell you about something, because it's really cool. Black market. Oh black market stuff. Through the time investment and just collecting boxes of stolen stuff from other players. Things like drugs now suddenly make a lot of sense where we can crank up the profitability of them. You know, it's, it's, it's about time, you know, we, you know, we start breaking the law here and there. <laughs> My favorite ship in 36 is the Archimedes because that name is awesome. We don't have a lot of ships that kind of have that style. Reminds me a little bit of the, like the Batmobile. It's kind of that kind of arc back to kind of Battlestar launching the fighters, that sort of kind of idea and having those single-seater kind of fast combat ships. And the ship is cool too. <laughs> Important feature coming to the game is the hover mode and I really look forward to that. Really showcases uh, what like atmospheric flight can be. And it has this like effect of making the, the low speed atmospheric flight super believable and interesting. It kind of makes it dangerous for you to be so close to the surface. Uh, what's cool about the new hover mode? I don't know anything about the new hover mode. <laughs> so getting the insurance claims to persistently maintain your item part customization. So I think that's something that a lot of the players are really excited about. We're making a few additions to the comms behavior in the game and group behavior. So some uh, that involves uh, things like ship hailing, uh, the ability to uh, change preferences in your mobile glass, an audio widget that tells you who you're talking to and who's talking to you. Finally, the ability uh, to uh, automatically join a ship channel when you enter that ship. This is awesome. It brings back all kinds of like real classic sci-fi kind of tropes and, and interactions. So this is something I'm excited about. Uh, the rework of the Vanguard is cool because the concept image is actually being brought back to life. The ship team have been showing us the progress on the Vanguard Warden and we sit in the Aegis conference room that has this gigantic mural on the side of the wall of the Vanguard. So it's been real great to have Chris in the meetings looking up at the wall, turning around and like looking back at the screen and being like, what about those little flaps right there? And trying to get it close into like the original feel that we really wanted to have for that ship. I kind of feel like if I look at the concepts, it's on a wall here. Is VoIP and VoIP enabled by default? Yes, it is. We got there. So when a man comes round, I'm going to point him in the right direction. I think the coolest addition to 3.6 has got to be the ship kiosk. I think it's cool that you can earn almost, almost any ship. Back, undo, OK. Kiosk, a really excellent opportunity for the players to have a chance to work towards some of these different and more exciting ships that they want to get their hands on. Because just having access to all these ships is hands down a totally new experience for the players. Have you seen the new space station exteriors? Mm. Yes, they're fucking cool the grandness of their scale and that variety of exteriors that they've got going. Improve the diversity and shape of uh, our space stations throughout the game. We've got circular ones, we've got some that are like kind of telescopic, like tall, but still have a, a good sense of scale. Some crazy procedurally generated 
combination of uh, geo and docking ports and things. It doesn't look like a copy and paste of one station to another. They feel bigger, they feel more substantial. It's kind of just hardcore sci-fi vibe that you get from them. We need more stuff like that in the game. Yeah, so Jeremiah had a lot of sugar that day. In all seriousness, we're all big fans of the flashy locations like R Corp, but this patch is focused on that thing that's at the center of it all, gameplay, and of course setting the table for additional improvements down the line. Things like the law system, ship kiosks, communications improvements, persistent loadouts and more may not be the most visually shiny of features, but they aim to change the way that we play Star Citizen going forward, and of course push the persistent universe in new and exciting ways. So, when does Alpha 3.6 go live? The straight answer is, we're going to figure that out together. Right now, 3.6 is in focus testing with Evocati. After that, we need to enable big ticket features and get as many of you all banging the pipes, as it were, to shake this thing down and make it the best patch it can possibly be. Now soon, assuming it hasn't happened already, we do film this a couple days in advance, we're going to open Wave 1 to testers and continue expanding until all Star Citizens can help. It's a process that may not move as fast as everyone likes, but it's nevertheless an essential part of making Star Citizen everything it can be. So keep an eye out on our various communications channels for more information as it becomes available. Now for Inside Star Citizen, this is it. The end of our quarterly season. Alpha 3.6 is right around the corner, and just like last quarter, we're going on a brief hiatus to give our developers time to focus on the release and aftermath of the new patch and begin our production of segments and features for the next quarter. We hope that you enjoyed this inaugural season of Inside Star Citizen as much as the team here liked putting it together for you each and every week. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for Star Citizen Live with Live Game Director Todd Pappy, who will address many questions you have about the upcoming patch. Until next time. Okay, now that all the posers are gone, We've got nine episodes this quarter with a ship feature. You think we're going to drop the ball in the tenth and final show? Hell no! <laughs> now, it's still super early, but let's go ahead and take a quick look inside the Karak. The Karak is going to be my first spaceship that I'm going to model. I know that fans are uh, dissipating about it and learning news about it, so zero pressure there. Today I'm going to show you one of my main tasks, to design and model the captain's quarters. The main room is the captain's office, which has as a main focal point his desk, which I want to make it bulky and steady to show that it's a boss desk. The floor is a bit higher than the rest of the area because I wanted to make him look always a bit higher than the rest of his crew. Behind him you can see two big monitors, which I placed in them so he can have the freedom to show to his crew some stuff instead of taking them around his desk. I also placed a glass ceiling with uh, some applied sources uh, above his desk to make it mo look more fresh. On both sides of the door you can see some shelves which probably I'm going to use one of them for a minibar. The next room is his bedroom which is big enough to fit his bed, locker and a closet. Okay, I will show you the toilet. So, the next room is his bathroom, which uh, has also a fresh designing, always following the Anvil guideline. Uh, for this room, I have used the modular kits, which I also placed for the crew quarters, toilets and shower rooms. While I was uh, designing this uh, room, the captain's office, I want to give the feeling to the player that uh, maybe things are going to get bad, maybe something serious is going to happen, enemies are approaching. I want to give that imposing feeling. So, what did we learned this quarter? We learned that it's okay to change up our formats and try something new in our continuing efforts to evolve with development and our community. We learned that developers might not always like being on camera, but if you set up shop in their natural habitat and not here on the stage like this week, they sure do like to make their presence known while filming. And we learned that between characters, locations, gameplay, vehicles, weapons, core tech, and AI, there's a lot going on with Star Citizen's development each and every patch. To our subscribers, you get our continuing thanks each and every episode for making this show possible. And to every backer that helps make Star Citizen a reality, we'll see you next month. No.
Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel, or you can check out some of the other shows, and you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.